Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. In this episode, we are looking at the Tibial Tuberosity Advancement Procedure, or TTA, for stabilisation of the stifle following cranial cruciate ligament rupture. This episode explores the traditional TTA procedure using a cage, plate and fork to alter the functional geometry of the joint during weight bearing. So, let's go under the skin. When the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, the stifle is unstable with abnormal cranial movement of the tibia relative to the femur during weight bearing. The TTA procedure stabilizes the stifle during weight bearing by altering the angle between the tibial plateau and the patella ligament to 90 degrees. This is achieved via creation of a straight osteotomy at the tibial tuberosity, followed by an advancement of the tibial tuberosity by a predetermined amount. The alteration of the angle between the patella ligament and the tibial plateau alters the direction of pull of the quadriceps muscle. This exerts a caudal force on the tibia that should negate cranial tibial thrust during weight bearing. Very accurate preoperative planning is essential, both to ensure correct positioning of the osteotomy and to determine the degree of advancement required. The patient is positioned in dorsal recumbency and the stifle joint is approached by a medial incision. A mini-medial arthrotomy, or arthroscopy, should be performed in order to inspect the joint space. Particular attention must be paid to the inspection of the menisci, and in particular, the medial meniscus. It is important to understand the intra-articular anatomy. Damaged areas of meniscus and remnants of the cruciate ligament should be debrided. The joint capsule is left open once the arthrotomy is complete. The patient is returned to lateral recumbency with the affected limb downward, although experienced surgeons may be happy to complete the procedure with the patient in dorsal recumbency. The plate size chosen during preoperative planning is checked against the tibial tuberosity for fit. The plate is then gently contoured using the T-handle device and oval plate bender to match the contours of the tibia. The TTA drill guide is positioned over the tibial tuberosity with the holes pointing distally. The drill guide is secured to the bone using pointed bone-holding forceps. The most proximal plate hole is drilled and an anchor peg placed to secure the drill guide. The same is done at the most distal plate hole. The remaining holes are then drilled according to the plate size selected, so a five-hole plate has five holes drilled. The drill guide is removed from the bone. Identify Gerdy's tubercle. Place a K-wire vertically from medial to lateral at the most proximal aspect of the tibia so that it exits laterally over Gerdy's tubercle. Medially, the K-wire identifies the location of the proximal osteotomy. Reposition the plate on the tibial tuberosity, overlying the drilled holes. Using a bone scribe or diathermy, mark a point on the cranial tibial cortex halfway between the most distal fork hole and the most proximal screw hole. This mark indicates the distal aspect of the osteotomy. Using a bone scribe or diathermy, mark the line of the osteotomy between the K-wire and the mark created in the previous step. Approaching the distal mark, make a gentle curve so that the cortical exit point is a few millimetres proximal to that mark. This ensures that the osteotomy will exit the cranial tibial cortex in the correct position relative to the screw holes in the distal portion of the plate. Remove the K-wire. Place Gelpi retractors in the joint to reflect the patella ligament cranially. This avoids damage during creation of the osteotomy. Place the plate over the tibia and mark the point at which the plate no longer covers the osteotomy scribe line. Use an oscillating saw to make the osteotomy using the pre-scribed line as your guide. At this stage, 
The proximal section of the osteotomy should be monocortical. Distally, it should be bicortical. The back of the fork is inserted into the fork holder and the prongs of the fork inserted through the holes of the plate. The prongs of the fork are then manually inserted into the pre-drilled holes in the tibial tuberosity and then tapped home using a mallet against the fork holder or directly against the back of the fork. Once the plate and fork are placed securely, the osteotomy can be completed proximally by making the previous cut by cortical. The tibial tuberosity will now be free and unstable. The appropriately sized spreader is inserted proximally into the osteotomy to advance the tibial tuberosity according to the preoperative calculation of the required advancement. The depth of the caudal cut surface of the tibia is measured near to the proximal aspect of the osteotomy. This measurement indicates the length of cage required. If between measurements, select the shorter cage. Place the chosen length of cage into the proximal osteotomy for a trial fit, ensuring that it is not overly prominent on the lateral aspect. The cage must be distal to the proximal cut surface of the tibia, cranially and caudally. When a good cage fit has been confirmed, remove the cage and use the oval plate bender to contour the cage ears. The caudal ear is bent medially or outwards, the cranial ear is bent laterally or inwards. Position the cage in the osteotomy with the wide aspect proximal and the narrow aspect distal, approximately 3 mm distal to the most proximal aspect of the caudal cut surface. With the cage positioned correctly, reduce and compress the advanced tibial tuberosity using a large pair of single point reduction forceps. Drill the pilot hole for the caudal cage screw using a 1.8 mm drill bit. Aim caudal and distal. Measure the depth of the pilot hole and place a 2.4 mm titanium screw of the appropriate length. Ensure that the head of the screw engages the cage ear correctly. Now, drill either of the two distal plate holes in the tibial diaphysis, either 2.7 mm or 3.5 mm screws may be used here. Be aware of the edge of the tibial cortex, drill straight to avoid the cortex. Measure the depth and place the screw, ensuring good engagement of the plate hole with the screw head. Now, drill the pilot hole for the cranial cage screw using a 1.8 mm drill bit. Aim for where there is most bone stock, usually slightly cranial and slightly distal. Measure the depth of the pilot hole and place a 2.4 mm titanium screw of the appropriate length. Ensure that this screw is not over long. Finally, the second distal plate screw is placed, a 2.7 mm or 3.5 mm screw, as appropriate. Post-operative radiographs must be taken following closure of the joint capsule and soft tissues. For further information on the VI range of instruments and implants for TTA surgery and to view a comprehensive surgery guide on this procedure, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.